Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'll be giving you a guide to the three axis modules available from CAMWorks. So the CAMWorks three axis modules are actually broken down into three levels. Level one, level two, and level three. Now this is on the product grid that's available on our website, and you might see this in some of our demonstrations where we break down the different modules, different add-ons available with each one of those CAMWorks or SOLIDWORKS CAM modules. But a question we often get is, what is the difference between level one, level two, and level three? Well, on the same document, if we scroll down, you can see a little bit of a description as to what those levels actually are referring to. But sometimes that doesn't do it justice. So let's take a look at an actual part file at these actual operations and see what they actually mean. So first thing to note is with each of the three axis modules, you will get the area clearance toolpath, which is your 3D roughing toolpath. So once you're roughing out 3D parts, you're gonna use area clearance, and there's no difference between the different modules with respect to that particular toolpath. It's in the three axis finishing side of your work, you're gonna see the module differences. So let's take a look at level one. So three axis level one gives you the ability to use the flat area toolpath, which will recognize any completely horizontal face on your part and generate a toolpath for those horizontal faces. Now the benefit of this is rather than using your automatic feature recognition to find every single pocket, every single slot and have them as separate toolpaths, flat area will allow you to do that all in one toolpath with one unified toolpath. So you basically can shortcut a lot of the selections of parameters and such with just flat area, but it only addresses the completely horizontal faces. In level one, to do any kind of vertical wall, curved face, or tapered wall, you'll be looking at Z level. And what Z level lets you do is generate a toolpath that basically slices up the selection of surfaces in the Z direction. If we take a look at this from the side, what you do is you now take a look at all the surfaces that you've selected in your multi-surface feature, and you've sliced it in that Z step. But the issue with this one is that if we take a look at the top of any of these curved surfaces, it does not get finished. And mainly the issue with that is because the curvature on the top begins to plateau, it becomes almost horizontal. So the Z step, uh, any, any portion of that surface that falls in between that Z step is not recognized. The way to get around that with your level one is to use the shallow or the, comb the combination cycle options within the Z level. That will generate additional passes that will clean up that face on, on the part. The issue with that though is that you need some fine tolerancing there, some fine scallops just to finish that with the same toolpath. And it is not, uh, it does finish the surface, but it adds additional cycle time that you weren't really expecting in this particular level of this toolpath. So jumping up to level two, you now have more control over the trajectory of the tool. So let's take a look at the first toolpath available from that module called Pattern Project. What Pattern Project will do is it will project a toolpath onto your 3D part. So what we see here is the top view of my part and I've generated the Pattern Project of Slice. Slice will tell the software to generate a toolpath that only moves in one direction across the entire 3D part. In this case, the positive X direction. Now this is a great toolpath if you have a certain direction to your part, but if you have multiple directions, like say for instance, some of these curved surfaces here, then the toolpath does not finish all the edges of that surface. So anywhere there's curvature or anywhere the part is not in the same direction, for instance, on this curve over here, then you see a little bit of a distortion of the toolpath and it's, it doesn't have the same aesthetic quality you're looking for when you do finishing. Even with the option of cross, what you're doing is now rotating the direction by 90 degrees and then you, you further scallop or finish your part in the opposite direction. That adds cycle time to this toolpath, and again, it's not uh, it's still achieving the finish, but not in a way that you were expecting, not with the cycle time you were expecting. With level two, the introduction of trajectory control, you'll also see radial. Now the radial toolpath basically allows you to choose the center of a circle 
and a minimum and a maximum radius to move between. So essentially with the radial, it's perfect for any revolved features like we see on screen here. And it generates a radial or star pattern or a spoke pattern. So it always just moves in and out along that angled direction. Likewise, for any kind of revolved or curved surfaces, if we have something like the shape of this dome, then what we get is spiral. Spiral is essentially the same. You choose a center of your circle and you generate a spiraling toolpath. And this is perfect for any surface where it is completely revolved, like we see with the dome. And I want to start dead center of the surface. Continuing the idea of trajectory control, the last option in Pattern Project is flow line. Flow line allows me to choose an edge of the surface and another side, the other edge of the surface, and then flow a toolpath or blend a toolpath from one side to the other. And that gets around any kind of trajectory control lacking from slice. And it gives me this, uh, the ability to step the toolpath across the surface uh, in whatever direction it flows from one side to the other. If you're not sure which one of these trajectory control toolpaths to use, there is one option in here called constant step over. And what constant step over allows us to do is generate one massive toolpath for the entire part. It starts from the offset edges of your contain area or the default selection of your stock and it just works its way inwards. Now this is a huge toolpath and in this case it doesn't look the best offsetting from the rectangular stock. So with constant step over the best option is to use your contain and your avoid areas. And in that way, you get a nice, clean-looking toolpath that actually offsets from the, the new selected, the new manual selected contain area. And you can see that it actually generates much cleaner-looking toolpaths in, on an individual basis as well. Now, lastly, with a large 3D part, there is going to be tight corners. There will be uh, tight areas that your previous tools could not reach. So with the introduction of further toolpaths in level two, you get one called pencil milling. And what pencil milling will do is it'll focus on the sharp corners or the smallest radii that your previous tools cannot reach. And it'll focus on just those areas here. Now, in this case, there's a 90 degree corner there. I've taken a, a, uh, a small 5 8 ball end, uh, bull end mow, and I've just cleaned up that corner there. And in addition to that, if I want to feather out from that corner, depending on the size of my tool, I might do feather out a little bit more. There is a parallel option where I can now where I can now move up and out from that corner to further feather it out. So this is better for when you have those tight corners, but you have a smaller diameter tool. And then lastly, in level two, you have Curve Project. Now, Curve Project gives me the ability to actually project a planar sketch, a planar uh, set of text. Anything that is completely flat, I can now project it onto 3D surfaces, my collection of 3D surfaces, and I get something that I can use for 3D engraving or 3D uh, pattern projection. Moving on to level three. Now level three, essentially a level three is the beginnings of your multi-axis capability, but limited to 3D. So that gives us similar functionality to what we saw with level two. You get access to the multi-axis mill toolpath and you get further control in the multi-axis mill toolpath than you did in level two. If we go to pattern, not only do we get slicing, but we get slicing in whichever direction we like. So for instance, here I can do constant Z, which essentially is slice plus that Z level control. I can switch this out to parallel to the X axis. And we get something similar to the slice in X. I can move this into whatever direction I like. But since we have uh, multiple axis control here, I can move around where my slicing happens. So if I set that to 45 degrees from the Z axis, 45 degrees from the X axis, I get a completely different direction that is only possible inside the multi-axis mill toolpath. Additionally, 
multi-axis mill, again, very similar to the, to the level two operations we just saw. It's all about trajectory control. Here we get a different level of control. Inside of the multi-axis mill, I can offset from not only curves, but also surfaces. I can choose a nearby surface, and that gives me the ability to not have to zoom in and grab edges. I can grab just the surface itself, and that controls the interface, the, that controls the trajectory by the interface of my surface with the feature surface. And each one of those is driven by a different set of curves, a different set of surfaces. Gives me full capability to fully detail the trajectory of the tool across the part. Now, ultimately, those are similar enough to level two that the difference is negligible. It's really just where you want to do your controls. The main difference would be in level two, you're dealing with the ability to recognize mesh-based surfaces. And level three, you get the ability to recognize NURBS-based surfaces. But the deciding factor for level three is the fact that this is now a multi-axis mill toolpath. You now have the ability to do undercuts. So with this toolpath, we can now generate toolpaths that will recognize the undercut. So basically to boil it down, level one is the beginning of your 3D finishing capabilities. It just gives you the ability to recognize flat and nearly vertical or tapered or curved walls. With levels two and three, you're getting more into trajectory control. So level two, you're getting a lot of the 3D functionality in finishing that you're looking for in terms of different trajectories to control based off of different geometries. With level three, it's mainly about differing trajectory controls with more control over the types of geometry that you're able to select and the ability to do undercut. As soon as you get undercut, uh, as soon as you start recognizing NURB surfaces with your multi-surface features, then now you can do undercut capabilities. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and thanks for watching.